I'm sure you're a busy lady. You've got tons of stuff to do. I mean, like, how boring must it be for you to just to follow me around watching me interview passengers uh, unless there's some kind of intervener status that you maintain? In which case, why has censorship come to Toronto Pearson? Well, I would say nothing is ever boring with you, David, that's for sure. So <laughs> it's not boring. And I'm, I am just here, actually. You're free to talk to passengers or anything. But if you do have some kind of questions, I can dig up information for you. I'm already here. So it's just another way to, to help um, media, help us as well, know who's in the building, what's going on and where they are. David Menzies for Rebel News here at Toronto Pearson International Airport. Now, if you can believe it, folks, Toronto Pearson is already the worst airport in the world. And that includes third world airports. And guess what? It's going to get even worse because new fees are coming into effect. Or rather, I should say existing fees are going to be increased. That's going to make it all the more expensive for you to travel. Before I get into that, though, there are new rules regarding media availability at the airport. It used to be journalists just showed up and did their shtick, like this is the airport version of the town square. But now you have to go through a process. It requires 24 hours notice. You must be approved or else you're media non grata. And incredibly, you are followed around by a chaperone who determines if you're asking questions that are offside to airport customers. And my shadow is right here, uh, Tori. Tori, hi. <laughs> no, well, I, I, know, I know you're the, you're, you're the official censor, but what is the ostensible policy reason for you watching us? Because this is something I'd expect at an airport in North Korea or Cuba or China. I'm just here to make sure you guys get what you need. I know you know your way around Pearson pretty well, but okay. if there is any other information, like I told you just when we uh, introduced, I've got background details for you, anything like that. But yeah, you guys are welcome at the airport. It was easy registration for you, and here we are. But you're going to maintain a stance where you're going to determine what questions are acceptable or unacceptable? I mean... No, no, definitely no. Like it's still, it's the same as it was before. You've sent us questions, we can answer them definitely. It's more just about knowing where the media are and we can be with you here. It's to make sure we got operations in place. It's been a busy time at the airport, as you know. So that's really what it's it's about. There's never a time, like if you sent us a question, we're gonna answer you. But Tori, my entire career, I used to just come to the airport, do my interviewing and leave. And then earlier this year, you requested a, a notice when you're gonna be there and I would acquiesce to this. Now you need permission. And what makes the people that gets those permission forms determine whether a journalist is allowed or a journalist is declined? Well, we used to have this, you know this, I talked to you once before, during COVID when it was restricted access in the airport, it was only open to passengers and employees. So whenever media were coming, you would send us a notice, we would make sure security knows. So that's kind of what oh, we Actually, no, I just, uh, sorry, Tori, I would just show up. I never well, sent a note. once during the pandemic yeah, and I had okay. to remind you that that was, that was a rule for all media. And it was mostly because anybody that wasn't traveling or working at the airport during COVID rules uh, weren't allowed inside the airport. So we would just flag it for security, say media is coming, let them in. So we've kind of gone back to that kind of rule. But I, I'm sure you're a busy lady. You've got tons of stuff to do. I mean, like how boring must it be for you to just follow me around watching me interview passengers uh, unless there's some kind of intervener status that you maintain? In which case, why has censorship come to Toronto Pearson? Well, I would say nothing is ever boring with you, David, that's for sure. So <laughs> it's not boring. And I'm, I am just here, actually. You're free to talk to passengers or anything. But if you do have some kind of questions, I can dig up information for you. I'm already here. So it's just another way to, to help um, media, help us as well, know who's in the building, what's going on and where they are. It also helps our operations teams to know because sometimes they'll see media and they're like, what's going on? They ask us questions. So it's kind of about that. It's just us taking a little bit of ownership and then having this relationship with you guys. But I'm not here to, you know, there's nothing to stop you. Uh, I'm just getting this Orwellian vibe. Big sister is watching me. 
I hope I hope not. But I'm just here to help you, like I said. But you are. Well, I haven't stopped you yet. I haven't said you're you're totally open. So uh, free to talk to the passengers like you were before. If there are any areas that you're not allowed in, I can also help point that out. But I think that you're familiar with those areas. Not all media are those. Sometimes they end up in locations where they can't film. And so it, we think it might be a better idea if we're here to help guide them and make sure to be like, you can't be in a restricted area, security, that kind of thing. Let's move you over to this way. This is all open space. But Tori, on a logistical level, this 24 hours notice, I mean, this is an airport. 24 hours, we have amended that because that did cause some confusion. So oh. it's just whenever possible. So if you know ahead of time that you're coming, but we understand that, you know, media stories break in the morning, afternoon. So that's why if you can give us as much notice as possible, that's great. But it's not like a hard and fast rule. Oh, I understand because, you know, an airport being an airport, if God forbid there was a crash landing, I mean... Yeah, okay. anything. So happen. you wouldn't hold a journalist to you can't come because you didn't give us 24 hours. No, we understand that. Like it's definitely something that we wouldn't hold you to. But if you know you're going to be here, that lets us plan, and we can even help uh, suggest locations that you might want to go to get a better story. So if you know ahead of time you're coming, let us know as soon as possible. But we do understand that you know news breaks in the day of, and that uh, we can try to be here for you. One last question. I, I Sometimes I ask some prickly, impolite questions. You're not going to step in as a censor and say, that's offside, are you? No, I mean, we do have a rule in place that you can't be, you know, uh, badgering passengers or anything like that. Oh, we'd but, never do that. But if they're answering your questions, it's totally up to them. So okay. that's fine. Yeah, yeah, it's all fine. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Well, there you go. Uh, in 1984, it was Big Brother watching you. Uh, I'm calling uh, Tori Big Sister, but uh, it's a nicer, gentler Big Brother, I guess. And uh, we'll see how it goes if our report gets um, uh, interrupted again. This is something I would expect in a Banana Republic dictatorship. I mean, it's not Tori's policy. She's just working here. But it just strikes me as so weird, this added level of security, monitoring, it, this country is getting less and less like the Dominion I grew up in. For Rebel News, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies. Well, folks, here we are at Pearson International Airport, home to the newest merry band of censorious thugs. You see, Pearson wants media people to give them 24 hours notice when they show up to cover a story. They might deny you, they might approve you, who knows? Oh, and they're gonna send an escort along with you, you know, to monitor the questions you're asking. Yeah, sounds pretty Orwellian to me as well. In any event, you know we love to give you the other side of the story, the side of the story the mainstream media isn't reporting. So if you can go to rebelinvestigates.com, that's rebelinvestigates.com, and if you can chip in a buck or three, we would greatly appreciate it.